Hello, I'm Bob Matheny, Mayor of Zebulon, and this is the Zebulon Mayor Show. Um, I'm going to have a guest join us here in just a little bit, so, but first I thought I would update you on some of the meetings that we had uh, that were not filmed for this, uh, this TV station. I'm going to go through it rather quickly, but as always, if you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, we had a, uh, a public hearing back in May. One to, was to rezone some property on north of Rendell Avenue, which was the uh, Kemp property. Um, and uh, uh, they were requesting to rezone that property from R10 to heavy business. We granted that uh, in June. Um, and then we also had an amendment for a zoning ordinance to add solar farms and wind energy farms. We just didn't have those in our ordinance, so if somebody wanted to put in either, uh, there was no placement within our zoning. So we amended that as well and allowed it in certain areas, uh, obviously rather large areas uh, in the zoning map, but uh, we did that in June as well. We had a work session uh, on the budget uh, in May and went through that. Uh, we, we acknowledged the receipt of $4,000 that Walmart made a donation to the fire department and we had $2,000 received from Wake County for fire uniforms. Wake County helps pay for our fire department because we service and contract to, to service the uh, fire district outside the municipal limits. Uh, we reviewed the Highway 96 corridor study plan and that's the long range plan for the development of Highway 96. Uh, basically from uh, uh, the four lane 64 north up to uh, Riley Hill Road. So we took another look at that uh, and, and uh, uh, getting, getting prepared for development up in that area. We adopted a hazard mitigation plan, which I had talked about earlier in an earlier show. Uh, that's just uh, preparations for when something goes sour and you need to be prepared and know what actions or reactions you're gonna take. So we adopted that plan as well. We then went into a closed session for the annual review of our town manager Rick Harden and after that session we uh, uh, granted him a two and a half percent pay raise uh, um, which was again part of his annual review. <clears throat> we then had a special meeting on May the 30th for the formal presentation of the budget to the board and this is, is required by general statutes. So we received that budget, uh, staff made a full presentation, and then uh, we called for a public hearing on the budget, which will be held on June the 20th at 7 o'clock. Now, if that date has not come around yet and you're watching this show and you want to speak on the budget, feel free to come and sign up, and uh, you'll have an opportunity to make comments on the budget. Uh, we had a public hearing meeting in early June that was not filmed. And we had the rezoning request of 40 acres, which is out on the east side of town between the industrial park and Walmart, uh, the Don Perry's uh, property. And uh, that request is to rezone from R20 to heavy business. And uh, we're, we're waiting for a recommendation from the planning board on that. We then took a look at the multimodal transportation plan to modify three lane requirements on old 264 from Highway 97 to 39. We're gonna, as a result of this, take a review of this whole transportation plan and what it looks at is uh, how the roads are gonna be constructed as future development occurs along those roads. That particular stretch is a bit of a problem because one side is, is uh, highway and the other side is private property, so there's no way to have participating uh, property owners from both sides uh, for that road. So we're, anyway, we're going to be taking a look at that. No final decision was made. Uh, and then also we went through and looked at some modification of the requirements that our Board of Adjustment would have when they grant variances. What the Board of uh, People can do is if they want to make a, uh, an appeal to the Board of Adjustment to do something that the ordinance doesn't allow, they, they, the Board of Adjustment holds that hearing and they can grant what's known as a variance. But there are certain specific criteria. For example, it has to be, for the most part, something uh, beyond the control of the individual. It can't be just because they want an exception. They have to have a specific reason. And so what we've done is better define those reasons. And that was really done at the urging of our uh, town attorney 
to uh, bring the ordinance into compliance with the court rulings on this subject. So, again, if you have any questions on any of these, I'll be glad to talk to you, as, as will our staff or any other board member, uh, about what we were doing. But I wanted to kind of give you an update. Things, things are moving along. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here and bring two people in and talk about recreation. All right, we moved around just a little bit, and as I said, we're going to talk about recreation. So joining me is Tim Hale. And Tim, uh, welcome. Glad to have you here. My pleasure. Uh, Thank Tim you. Tim is the athletic coordinator for the recreation department. And you've seen this face before, Sheila Morris. And Sheila, glad to have you back. Thanks for having Sheila me. Sheila is the community center coordinator for the recreation department. So we're going to talk, as I said, about recreation. Then we'll start and, and talk about what what your function is in the recreation department. Very well, I'm, briefly. The, I'm the athletic coordinator, which basically uh, entails that I plan, implement, and coordinate uh, athletic events for uh, youth and adults in the town. Right. Um, what we've just finished with is our biggest program of the year, and that's our youth baseball and softball program right, right. that we're finishing up with now. And that started when? I mean, well, we actually do. Spring, or? We actually do registration for it in January of right. every year because it takes quite uh, uh, quite a bit of time to get it all organized and uh, and get everything ready. We actually hit the field in March with practices and then we'll start playing games every year in May and that typically runs to about the middle of June so right about the time frame we are in now. And that, that is a big thing. It's how many teams? We had 28 teams this year. Wow. Uh, we start uh, all the way with our four-year-olds uh, that are on the t-ball field and uh, we range all the way up to 13 and 14 year olds for baseball and softball. That is terrific. Well, okay, if they missed that, what can they look forward to now? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we're in between seasons right now. Uh, we will uh, uh, start our fall registration. It's kind of hard to believe that we're already talking mm -hmm. about fall. Uh, time is just flying, but believe yeah. it or not, we're, we're going to do our fall registration beginning this coming Monday, which is uh, June the 18th, and that will run for a two-week period through June the 29th. And then once we have uh, the registrations taken care of for our fall league, uh, we'll get them out on the field, start practicing in August, and start playing games that week after Labor Day, which is the first week of September. And and uh, I'm looking at some of the notes that you, you sure. provide me to help me out. Absolutely. And, <laughs> but uh, you're talking about uh, the uh, the 10 U girls tournament uh, and the 14 U girls tournament. I mean, tell me. What, what are we talking about? Yeah, basically, uh, it's an exciting time of year. Uh, every league that we offer in baseball and softball that is above a seven and, a, and up offers an all-star opportunity. And uh, the, the coaches within the league nominate players, and then the teams are selected. Uh, once we have our teams selected, then we go play in district tournaments uh, for each age group. Uh, if we're fortunate enough to win a district tournament, then you can advance on and, and play for a state uh, championship. Now, within our district uh, this year, we are playing host, our department will, for, as you said, the 10U girls, which are uh, going to be 9- and 10-year-old girls. Uh, we will host that tournament at Zebulon Elementary School Park. It'll start on Sunday, June the 24th, and uh, run through that uh, Wednesday, which is June 27th, uh, double elimination tournament. Um, and then we'll go right in. Well, we'll we have one day built in for rain, so uh, I hope everything works out with that. And then we'll host the 14U uh, tournament that Friday. So we'll just have one day to play with there, and that will be out at Community Park. And we'll have uh, some more teams coming in for that. And uh, like I said, those teams will compete, and with the winners going on to play in. Uh, uh, state tournaments, and those are all held in uh, Smithfield this year for all well, the girls. Well, for the uninitiated, you is under, right? 14 it is. and under, 10 it and is. under. I mean, we've got people out here that 14 and under. Like your mayor. There I you used go. not to, but with <laughs> the two grandkids, I know not. I tell you, it's hard <laughs> sometimes to keep track of. But, but that's that, what it but, is. But it's you're 10 exactly and under, right. 14 and you're under. You're exactly that's right. right. That is what that is okay. uh, referring to. Okay. Uh, well, let's talk just a little bit more. You said something about fall baseball, softball registration. Anything else in the cooker? Well, we'll be that. That's where our priorities are right now, as far as athletics go. Um, right. We'll, we'll uh, do the registration uh, process for that. Again, now a lot of our time and effort in the next week or so will be in preparations for the tournaments that we just spoke about. 
Uh, but for league play, that's where our priority will be with this, with that fall baseball and softball league. Um, not to get too far ahead, but once we do complete our fall baseball and softball, of course, we'll roll right into our youth basketball program that we offer during the winter time. And maybe we'll get an opportunity to come back on at some point. Well, that's sort that. of um, what, what I was going to sort of describe is that you look after the outside, Sheila, you look after the inside. <laughs> the basketball is inside. It is very much shared. And I think Sheila would, would right. tell you the same right. thing, that right. we have to and be and uh, uh, communicate greatly of course, uh, in I, regards to I realize to certainly that you do. So, yeah. uh, well, Sheila, let's talk just a little bit about, about what – summer programs we, we have at the community center right um we actually have a wide variety of programs that we facilitate uh, we do summer camps on a weekly basis a lot of them are sport based some of them are culture based and um, art based but we grow every year we offer something different something new and then we keep the same old same old um, that are always big hits uh, we also do an open gym for the teens that, on th that are 13 to 18 years old. They come in, they pay a dollar. We have a supervisor that comes in and they play basketball uh, with their peers for an hour and a half once a week. Um, so that's been a big hit. We've been doing that for a while. We did it last summer and we'll continue it this summer as well. Okay. The camps, you sort of touched on the mm -hmm. camps, but uh, can you can you give us a quick rundown again on those? Absolutely. Um, our sport-based camps, uh, we have your typical, we just are completing our golf camp. Uh, tomorrow's the last day for this week. Uh, we'll roll into tennis camp next week for ages 9 to 14. Um, and then from there, we're going to have a soccer camp. We'll also do like your cheerleading, basketball, girls volleyball. Uh, in the past, we had your baseball and softball, but we found, as Tim described, where you go straight from your spring league and then some of them play your select and they play in the tournaments and then they go into fall. So we found the summer was their break time from baseball and softball. So it started to dwindle down. So we do those camps um, over Easter break and spring break now. Uh, so you won't see those camps uh, this year. But uh, those are sport-based camps. Well, you, you have uh, art camps. What, mm -hmm. what kind of arts? I mean, is it restricted to, like, painting or is it... No, uh, is it not necessarily. Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have two that are more along the lines of your painting and drawing and doing crafts and making sculptures. Uh, the two art camps that we have this year are with different instructors each. Uh, one camp will base, uh, be based on art uh, throughout time. Uh, so how cavemen um, did art and um, how art was in the 1800s and, and, and it will um, grow each day. They're going to look at this, something different and have the chance to actually do art the way that was done during that time. And then the second art camp uh, is art around the world. So they'll visit Africa, they'll visit Asia, they'll do art, like American art, um, art from Spain. It'll be a little bit something every day so they're getting to learn about art as well as do it themselves and I think that, that these camps are you've had them previously if I'm not mistaken right so, um, so, but you're kicking some new stuff in oh yeah uh, um, about that in uh, the newest camp this year we've got several um, we've got a karate camp uh, Charles Mann has been teaching karate with us for 30 years he is a ninth degree black belt and we are very fortunate to have him he's wonderful and he is going to come in and do a karate uh, camp. So it's a week-long camp, um, and it's the first time, so we think it's going to be great. Uh, another new camp we're doing is Sizzling Science. So they're going to visit a different um, spectrum of art. So, I mean, not art science. Like, one day they'll do physics. One day uh, they'll do chemistry. And then the next day it'll be biology. So it's something different every day. Mm -hmm. um, Gina Bryant is teaching that. And then we're also going to do Monkey in the Middle. Um, so it has a fun name. <laughs> yeah, I started to make a quip, but I'll leave it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, It is a fitness-based camp, and we are uh, lucky to have Amy Skaggs that's going to run that for us. And they're going to play games and um, they'll also go into uh, talking about being healthy, and they will make a healthy snack every day as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you who the monkey was. But, uh, <laughs> Probably me. <laughs> me. Yeah. Oh, I thought you'd pick on somebody else. No, <laughs> because think. someone that's not here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Greg in there. That. <laughs> All right. Well, look, uh, when, you know, 
you said fall's not far away, but the end of summer's closer. Uh, what, what do you see coming up for the end of summer? Um, well, when we close out of summer, then we start going into like our after school um, activities. We've always done art uh, one day a week after school. We do have kids fitness once a week. Uh, we will continue uh, basketball opportunities for that teenage uh, group. Um, we would love, we've been working on trying to get some volleyball interest. We do have the capabilities of doing volleyball at the community center. And so um, we are just trying to get some families together to, to work on that. Uh, we also prepare for Tim's Basketball League. Um, once November gets here, we're going into practices and in December as well. And so uh, a lot of the building is dominated by that in the evenings and after schools. But we will continue any of our programs that are year-round as well. So. And what, what age groups are you reaching with these programs? Um, I mean, it sounds to me like it's across the board and all that. Yeah, we do programs from preschool on up to seniors. Right. Um, preschool, um, like today, this morning, we had beginning sports. And so we've got a nice little group of kids. Um, we are also going to do a preschool camp called Celebrate Summer um, in July. So that's going to be a lot of fun, and you know, kids four to seven can sign up for it. Um, but then you go into our seniors, and we're going to have like a senior ice cream social in July. Uh, and so they pay a dollar. We're going to have ice cream, all your toppings. We're going to put out the pickleball. We're going to have the Wii on the big screen. We're going to have ping pong tables. We're going to bring cornhole and let them play cornhole as well. So we do try to reach everybody. Uh, we do Zumba classes for your adults. Uh, we're going into, uh, we're currently planning a summer adult league, uh, basketball league. And so we try to reach everybody that we can. And you still have the morning walking program. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. it's probably one of our strongest programs right. that we have. Right. Um, they're coming in. We say it cuts off at 10, but they walk until about 2. And then well, as long as, as programs, yeah. No reason, why not? yeah, as long yeah. as we don't have programs, we welcome them. Right. Um, yeah. And if we're busy at the center, uh, we've paved a uh, walking track around right. one of the ball fields at Community Park in three laps is a mile. Right. So. Well, how much does this cost somebody to participate? Uh, each program has its own uh, partici or participation fee, registration fee. Uh, most of our camps are $50 for town residents, 60 for non. You may see if you come to register, say, for drama camp, uh, it's 75 because it's two weeks. So some of that will change. Um, <coughs> then we have a lot of programs that are free, like the walking group. Uh, we have a senior cards group. That, that's free. Um, we typically try to cover cost, and uh, so if you sign up for Zumba, we're going to charge enough to cover um, the expenses that we have. Uh, so if you came to Zumba, you could pay $5 a class, or you could buy a couple classes, 7 is 25 um, And then all these programs, you'll have the additional $10 for non-residents. Yeah, you know, I get asked that question. Well, I live in Zeppelin. Why do I have to pay, right. you know? And, we get and, it a lot as well. Yeah, I know you do. And, and the thing is, you know, we're, we're proud of everybody that lives in this area, but there is a difference of living in town and paying town taxes and mm -hmm. living out of town and using town services. Right. Uh, and that's the reason for it, pure and right. simple. I mean, this, this center and programs are are subsidized mm -hmm. with town tax dollars mm -hmm. that the residents pay. So that's right. why there is an additional charge for non-residents. Right. And it's, you know, if you stop and think about it, it's fair. Oh, in, yeah. in my opinion, Absolutely. it is, anyway. So, but I thought we might, mm -hmm. you know, might mention that. Yeah. Uh, it is. Well, okay, I want to get into these camps. How do I go about doing that? <laughs> uh, to get registered for camp, you can go online to townofzebion.org. Uh, under the Parks and Recreation Department, you'll see links to the summer camp registration form. Uh, you can fill that out. You can mail the filled out form and the payment uh, via check to uh, the community center or you can come by the community center you can come by town hall uh, we have the registration forms here as well uh, so you, that's all you need to do to get registered and there's for each camp there is a deadline um, it's typically a week before the camp begins so that we can make sure we get we do t-shirts and um, make sure that all the supplies are ready for each camper so 
Uh, one last thing, uh, we're, we're getting a little tight on time, but uh, outdoor recreation trips, you got anything planned? We do. This year we are doing uh, a canoe trip and a sea kayaking trip. Uh, last summer we did two canoe trips and so they were very successful and this year we're going to continue with that. Uh, we're going to do a canoe trip at the end of this month and then mid-July we're going to head to Hammock Beach and do uh, their kayaking trail there and we're excited about Sounds it. Sounds like a lot of fun. I know you had good participation last year. We, we absolutely program, did. So, uh, anyway, well uh, I want to thank both of you for coming in. I know we got a little rushed on time here, but that's yeah, just the, the price we pay for uh, 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 East Wake TV schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, having said that, I, I do appreciate you taking the time to Thanks come in, and us. I appreciate what you do for the town. Our pleasure. Thank you. Um, and thank you folks for watching. I hope you found this information useful, and uh, we'll see you next month.